Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to see all of you here on this beautiful, very hot Sunday morning. I uh, hope that you're enjoying this warm, balmy weather that we're having uh, this time of year. Uh, and I was walking through the house this morning, and I hear Allison go, 28! Uh, so uh, it was quite chilly taking the dogs out this morning. Uh, and uh, But uh, it's this time of year, it should be uh, like that. Uh, we're glad you're here today. If you're visiting, I'm Pastor Mark. If you have any questions about the church, feel free to ask me or one of the ushers. And uh, please go by our Welcome Center uh, this morning. They have a little gift uh, for you. And we have lots of great announcements that we want to share with you this morning. Uh, first of all, we want to thank again the choir for the fantastic cantata they did last week. Um, If uh, y'all weren't here, you missed out uh, on a fantastic uh, performance. Uh, and uh, uh, we raised $3,340 for Louisiana Flood Relief uh, and that night. So uh, what a great gift that we'll be able to give uh, our conference with that. And uh, you were given the gift of music. Uh, and I just really love that uh, arrangement uh, that he made. And that was we're one of the first uh, churches that were able to do that because it just came out. Uh, we are starting to uh, meet the good people study uh, the second Sunday uh, in um, January. Uh, but we'll start the devotions the week before, so hopefully if you'd like to be part of that, that uh, you will uh, be a part and uh, journey together with us uh, through that book. We're going to learn about Wesley's seven ways to um, meet uh, people, uh, to evangelize, and to share our faith. Uh, and uh, all the churches are doing it. Looks like we have someone who wants to say something about that. Go ahead. We'll have Sunday school classes devoted. We'll have Sunday school classes devoted to that. We'll have devotionals with that. Uh, and uh, both services will have sermons that come from those devotionals in that book. Uh, it's going to be a great time together. Uh, tonight, you're all invited to uh, Blue Christmas service. Uh, at 6 o'clock in the well. Uh, this is a service that uh, is designed for those that Christmas might not be such a joyous time. Maybe they've lost someone. Uh, maybe uh, they're grieving. Uh, but everyone is invited. Uh, last week I was like, well, I don't really have anybody who, who's, who's died. I'm not really grieving. Can I come? Of course you can come. It's going to be a great worship service at the well. Hope you will come and be a part of that. Also, on Christmas Eve, uh, you might want to write this down. It's not in your bulletin. 5 o'clock is our uh, candlelight Christmas Eve service. I uh, hope to see all of you here uh, for that wonderful service. 5 o'clock Saturday for our Christmas Eve service. Uh, and then Sunday, uh, we are only having a, a service at 10 a.m. Uh, so mark that on your calendar. We will. The service will be at 10. There will be no Sunday school. There will be no donuts because uh, the donut shop is closed. Uh, and we're going to celebrate Christmas uh, at uh, the Sunday service at 10 o'clock in both services. Uh, everyone is invited to wear your pajamas um, if they're appropriate. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we're going to have a great time to celebrate the birth of Jesus uh, Sunday. Remember, 10 o'clock. Uh, that that service will be on Sunday and then 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Uh, Saturday for the Christmas Eve service. Um, don't forget your red bags next week. And I want to thank everybody for all of the gifts that we are going to be able to give uh, to our community and also all those people who helped out uh, with the angel trees. So what a great giving congregation that this is. Uh, Y'all give so much to this community. Uh, and just want to thank you for that. Uh, now we'll have the lighting of the Advent reading. Three hundred fourteen what? Three hundred fourteen loves in my Bible. What are you talking about? I was just looking in my Bible and trying to find a love scripture Pastor Mark hasn't preached on. I figure he still has about thirty or so to go. Then he starts repeating himself. Three hundred fourteen loves. That's a lot. And I have a pretty basic version. There might be more. 
like God is love. In Genesis, God's creation of the earth was an act of love. In Exodus, he tells Moses he shows his love to a thousand generations. That has to include us. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Abounding in love. I like that. How about his love endures forever? And surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. The earth is filled with our love, your love. All those references are from the Old Testament. Then there was Bethlehem. What a love gift there. When Jesus was baptized, God said, This is my son, whom I love. Jesus taught us to love the Lord God to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself and your enemies. In Christ we saw what love looks like. Love is patient and kind. Love does not delight in evil. Love never fails. That we being rooted in establishing love may have to grasp how wide and long. And high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. For love comes from God. As the light before the candle of Advent, love, let us have heaven. God is so Grateful, O oh God, help us to love as you love, to offer grace, to be peacemakers, to be a blessing. Help us be your people of love in a hurting world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Israel, you who leads Joseph like a flock. Restore us, O God, 
let your face shine, that we may be saved. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. as we join together in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As a people of God, we're called to pray for each other and with each other. At this time of their concerns, you want to lift up to the congregation. Uh, we need to uh, be in prayer for the uh, Henderson family. Dr. Henderson passed away this morning at about 5.30. Uh, so uh, be in prayer for them. Uh, they're thinking a funeral probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, but as soon as uh, we get the information, we'll let you know. Uh, so be in prayer for them. Uh, other concerns? Okay, 
So, so on the 27th, he's going to have a CAT scan to find out if everything is progressing properly and that sort of thing with the cancer. Okay. Okay. All right. Other concerns? Mark. Richard's first cousin, Harold Skiles, a lot of people may have known him as the Queen of Zombie Fire Department. He has been sent has been sent home with hospice and we're not looking at very much okay. more. Harold Skiles uh, has been sent home with hospice, so be in prayer for them. So let's uh, continue to pray for Larry Ramsey. Uh, I think he probably should be finishing up his last chemo either this week or this pa- this coming week, uh, and then they will do a scan as well to see if uh, everything has shrunk to where they can do surgery. Any other concerns? I heard that wife in the hospital. Yeah, Mr. James' wife. Went and Friday, I think, but I haven't heard anything different. And Polly Cook is still. Yeah, Polly Cook is still there, so be in prayer for her. She recovers from pneumonia. Okay, joys. We have any joys this morning? I got a beer going on. <laughs> That should, have, that should have been the concern if you didn't know he hit it with his truck. Um, it was a beautiful deer. A uh, nice, big buck. Um, so, congratulations. Uh, se- se- one shot, one kill. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Sarah Kaiser uh, made it into nursing school, if you didn't hear that. So, uh... Fran is here. Fran is here. Uh, other uh, joys? Ronnie had a birthday. Ronnie had a birthday. And people showed up for his party finally. <laughs> so we're glad. We were worried, Ronnie, when you posted that. We were like... <laughs> I don't know. So, other birthdays? Ronnie's the only one? You're special. Yeah. Any anniversaries? You're 80 today? Okay. Bernie and I are celebrating uh, on the 23rd our anniversary. I think we've been married 63 years. <laughs> 63 years. Fantastic. <laughs> Any other anniversaries? I just can't remember how long. <laughs> Ann and I will have an anniversary on the 23rd also. Right. But only 61 years. Only 61 years. Okay. Sixty-three on the twentieth. They have you beat because they're quicker. Was there another one back here? Okay. Any other joys? Something's going on with the bear because I see it all on the first bench over there. Yeah, we are, we have the whole bear family on the uh, front pew. If you haven't seen, uh, and if you haven't looked at all the uh, presents, that what a joy uh, to see all these gifts that we'll be able to share with uh, our community. Our 63rd anniversary will be this Thursday. So 60, what, what was going on 63 years ago? Uh, I'm going to have to go Google that and see... Uh, what was going on there? Congratulations to all. That is a phenomenal witness. Uh, all, all that many people, 63 years, 61 years, fa- fantastic uh, witness to love. And on this Sunday, where we light the love candle, what, uh, what a great uh, witness that is. Uh, let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're expectantly waiting for the coming of Your Son, Jesus, as we anticipate Him coming into the world again. We look forward to celebrating 
once again His birth. We thank You for loving the world so much that You sent Him into it to give us life, to give us hope, to give us joy, to give us peace, and most importantly, to show us what real love does. Help us to love in that same way. This coming week as we prepare, prepare our hearts, prepare our souls, prepare our minds for Him coming into the world. Lord, we've mentioned many concerns to You this morning, um, two of which dealt with cancer, and we pray for healing of cancer this morning. All those who've been touched by it, we pray that it would be gone. We pray for healing, for the cancer to disappear, for it never to come back again. We pray for all those families around the world who are going through um, loving their loved one through this disease. We pray that Your Holy Spirit would come and comfort and keep and heal and strengthen and shine the light of Jesus into their lives. We thank You so much for the witness of marriage. So many years, we thank You so much for the witness of that faith. We ask Your continued blessing over them and, and marriages everywhere. Help us all who are called to marriage love our spouse the way that You showed us how to love. All of this we pray in the name of the One who came into the world, who came into the world to show us what real love was who was born in a manger, Your Son, Jesus. And now we pray the prayer that He taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would, open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 7 and 8. If you're using an electronic version of the Bible, I use the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible and you'd like one, we'll give you one for free. If you'd like to buy a study Bible for someone you know or love, we have those in the office that you can buy. We also have a couple of large print Bibles that don't have um, notes on them. Uh, if you'd like to buy those for someone as well, um, those are all $54. Second Timothy four, seven and eight. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. The Word of God for the people of God. God. Will the ushers please come forward now as we worship God with His ties and our offerings above those ties. Once again, we want to remind you, if you haven't turned in your uh, estimate of giving card, please do so. We have some cards back there on the table in the North X. So please get those in. And also, if you'd like to make a special year-end gift to the church, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated this time of year as well. Let us bow our heads and hearts. Our giving Father, who gave of Himself for each and every one of us, who gave us true love and loves all of us, an abounding love, and now we give back to You Your tithes and our offerings above those tithes. Help us as a church to spread the love of Christ throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. 
آمین
25 through 26. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? The Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to your word, O Lord our God, our rock, and our redeemer. And we pray that your spirit would guide and direct us, would open our hearts, would fill us with love, with hope, with peace and joy. And as we wait expectantly for the coming of Christ, <laughs> May you fill us so strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> There's one thing in this world that makes me anxious, which gets my stomach all up in a roar. I, I start to worry about... There, there's only one thing that really makes me anxious. And that's the unknown. The what is going to happen if. Or, or not knowing something. And, and I tell you what, it can really just eat me up uh, by not knowing. By not knowing what is going to happen. Uh, and I'm sure for Scrooge, as he waited for the next... Spirit to visit him. He had to truly be anxious about it. And, and if you remember the story, you remember that it goes from uh, the ghost of Christmas present and, and there's the, the bright light and there's the huge feast and it's the jolly spirit to what is it with the ghost of Christmas yet to be? What, what, is, what happens there? The, the room is totally dark. Uh, in some of the versions, it's cold and you can see Scrooge's breath coming out of it. And of course, uh, throughout the whole time that the, the spirit of uh, Christmas yet to be is there, he never utters a single word. And he's a grim feature in, in a cloak. And, and in some of them, you even see like a little skeletal hand pointing uh, later in the story. Uh, and you can imagine what Scrooge must have been going through uh, as he met this third spirit that visited him. What would you think if you saw this type character uh, in your bedroom? Well, I tell you, I'd reach that bat next door to my bed and I'd start to swing him, uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, he... the future can sometimes be very, very frightening. Can it? It can be very daunting. It can be very worrisome. And so Scrooge is taken uh, and, and the first thing he, he says is, is three of his business mates there and they're all talking about this poor guy that died. It's going to be the worst funeral there ever was. Nobody's ever going to go. And even one of them makes the comment that they'll only go if lunch is served. <laughs> uh, and you you start to wonder, well, who is this? And Scrooge starts to wonder, well, who in the world is this that they're talking about? And, and the next scene, Scrooge goes to a, a room where, where the, uh, his maid and, and uh, another person that worked for him, they're stealing the rings off the person's uh, fingers that's underneath his cloak. He knows the person's dead. He's, they're taking their terrible, thing, terrible things about this person. And Scrooge is like, well, do they not even care that this person's dead? Are they not even worried about it? But Spirit, take me someplace where someone is, is, is happy about this person's death. And he brings them to these two, this couple. And they're excited and they're thrilled that the person died because they don't have to now pay their debt to that person. Uh, and, and Scrooge is just heartbroken over all of this. And, and he's like, is there any place that there's some sort of happiness about that? And do you remember where they go then? They go back to the home of the Cratchits. 
where Tiny Tim has died. And of course that just breaks Scrooge's heart even more. And he asked the Spirit, do you remember what he asked the Spirit? Is this what is going to happen and it has to be? Or can things be changed? Can can things be different? And then where does the Spirit take Scrooge? To the graveyard. And he points to Scrooge. uh, And Scrooge is like, well, who is this man? Who is it? And he points to the gravestone and, and it's lit up. And of course it says Ebenezer Scrooge. And he, rem- he sees for the first time that it is Him who no one cares anything about. I, I love uh, uh, um, the Disney Scrooge episode there. At that point, uh, the, the ghost of Christmas uh, yet to be is Peg Leg Pete. And he's got a big cigar in his face. Uh, in his mouth and, and, and uh, he blows smoke into Scrooge's face and Scrooge McDuck, Scrooge McDuck falls into the grave and he's like, who is it? Who is it? And he says, it's you, Ebenezer Scrooge, the richest man in the graveyard. And Scrooge learned a valuable lesson at that time that probably all of us has learned at some point in their life. How many of y'all grew up playing Monopoly? Did y'all play Monopoly? Monopoly was my favorite game growing up. Uh, You know, in my household, we had a double closet full of board games from the floor to the top, all the way up and down. And we had we had every kind of board game you could possibly do. If we ever said we were bored, mom would say, go get a game. Uh, and, And nobody really liked Monopoly in my family, except my dad and I, because it took so long. Uh, because it could take weeks and weeks upon end to finish this game. Uh, and it's the only game that my mom would never play. And if you know anything about my mom, it's that she's brutally, brutally um, competitive. Uh, and look at Janet and Judy back there going. Uh, she is one of the most competitive people in all the world. And you know what? I think I finally figured out why she didn't like Monopoly. Because my dad always beat her. And it's the only thing in life that he ever beat her at. They went bowling the first date. They went bowling. She beat him so bad they never went bowling back again, ever again. Uh, and, and so we would have these marathon sessions if I could finally talk people into playing Monopoly because I loved it. And every single time my dad would win, he was brutal. He was the banker, of course. You know, all those bankers are brutal, mean, nasty people, right? Uh, and, and he... Uh, and he was always in charge of the money. And, and if we went through and we were going uh, and we, we didn't want a property, uh, he would pull out that one little clause that's at the very bottom of the rule book that says you could bid on property. That, did you all know that? That you can bid on the property that somebody doesn't want. He'd say, I want it for a dollar. And then he'd go, well, you can't do that. Well, I'll give you ten. And then you'd have this big, huge bidding war and finally he'd give it to you when you paid double for what uh, you you wanted to do. He was brutal and he won every single time. And and I can remember one time, I I was probably about 13, 14 years old. Finally, I got Boardwalk and Park Place and I had every kind of... of, uh, I mortgaged to the hilt so I could put uh, uh, those hotels on there. And, And I had Marvin Gardens. I had all those properties. I had all the railroads and the utilities. I had it all on there. And they had every hotel on there. And I can remember finally for the first time, I can remember finally him handing me his last dollar saying, you won. And the joy in my heart that went from finally beating my dad at Monopoly uh, there. And, and uh, he, he had the gall to tell me that he let me win. Uh, and, and then he, he said, all right, now it all goes back in the box. Right? And, and isn't that the way it is? We can't take any of it with us. Just like Scrooge McDuck was the richest man in the graveyard, it didn't matter what he had accumulated. Uh, And and I read something, I don't know if it's true or not, but it said that the reason that the ghost yet to be was so grim and so dark, it was because that was who Scrooge was if his life didn't change. And I like that. It it might not have been why it was written that way or what, but I, I think that's a good point because everything changes after that. Doesn't it? And we'll talk about that on Christmas morning. But I, I want us to talk a little bit about death. For a lot of us, death 
is the scariest thing there is because of the unknown. We, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what uh, we don't know what life's going to be without that person. We worry about it. We're anxious about it. It makes us all bunged up. But the scripture reminds us that death is not the end. That whosoever believes in me will not die but have everlasting life. And you know that everlasting life? It's a whole lot better than this life right now. It's a life that never ends. A life that doesn't hurt. A life that doesn't grieve. A life that is not sick. A life that is perfect in every single way. And as followers of Jesus Christ, the hope of Christmas' future isn't that scary. It isn't scary that one day... Did you know that one day where you're going to die... Did you know that? Every single one of us, one day, is going to die. Could be today. Could be tomorrow. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. At some point, these frail bodies will die. But for those who celebrate the birth of Jesus in the manger, for those who celebrate Jesus on the cross, for those who celebrate the life of Christ, know that that is not the end. And we don't have to be scared. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be worried. Yes, we're going to grieve because we miss the person that we love, but we will absolutely, positively, 100% see them again. And that is the hope that all of us have in Jesus Christ. I love uh, the Scripture that says uh, death has been swallowed up in victory. Why is it as those of followers of Jesus Christ don't see death as victory? All we do is see it as death. But the Scripture says, Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. That we have life and life abundant, not just when we die, but today. And even though we have people in our lives who are dying or are dead or we're grieving over them, we don't grieve as those that have no hope, but we grieve as those who know that Christ won the victory, that the baby Jesus goes on and the world is won. Where? Is that sting? Thanks be to God for the victory of Jesus Christ. When Mary is grieving Lazarus' death, and she says, If you would have just been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus looks at her and he says, Anyone who believes in me will not die. They will live. And he asked her a pointed question. Do you believe it? Jesus asked us that question today. Do you believe that if you believe, you will never die? And if you answer yes to that, and death shouldn't worry you at all. It ought to be a celebration like one of my uh, great uncles told me at the very first funeral that I went to. It ought to be a joyous thing. It ought to give us hope. It ought to give us thanksgiving. It ought to give us peace. It ought to fill us with joy to know that even though we die, we no longer suffer, we no longer hurt, we no longer have pain, we no longer... Christ died so that we could have death. That is the hope of Christmas future. That when Christ returns again, all of us, whether we're living or we're dead, are with the One who loved us so much that He came into the world to show us love, to show us how to love one another, and loved us so much that He died on the cross for me and for you. Do you believe it? Let us pray. The loving Lord, so oftentimes it's hard to see 
through the tears of grief. So hard to see the hope that You have given us through Your Son, Jesus Christ. We come to worship You today and to know that we have life and life abundant when we die. And as we live today, that whosoever believes will never die. Help our unbelief today. Help us those who are grieving. Help us those to experience the joy of Christmas present today. And not worry about our past. To not worry about the future. But to put our hope and trust and love in You. And You alone. May we remember that it's not about What we've done, it's about what you've done and us believing in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During our last song, if you uh, would like to come to the altar and pray, we invite you to do that. Uh, If you heard the good news this morning that Jesus Christ loves you and cares for you and wants you to have eternal life, and you'd like to receive that eternal life right now, then we invite you to come down uh, and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and you'd like to become part of this church family where you're going to grow, you're going to help, you're going to help each other, uh, pick each other up in our times of sadness and our times of grief to bring hope into a dark world. Uh, we invite you to come down and be part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack you can fill out. Bring that down uh, with you and become part of this church family. However God is inviting you to respond, we pray that you will as we all stand together and sing our last hymn. forget our worship service tonight uh, in the well at 6 p.m. I hope to see all of you here tonight. But let us go now into the world (coughs) declaring the hope, the peace, the joy and victory that there is in Jesus Christ. Believing in Him and in His life that our lives will never end. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen.
between us all the hugs, Thank you. 